I'm Nachola the Drawer, an artist and adventurer from the UK. Let's get creative. Hello! Today I'm in very wet, very windy England, but I'm dreaming of being back in Florence, Italy. I don't know if you've ever lived somewhere or gone somewhere and that place has become a part of you. This is part of a new series that I'm doing a part of me and it's going to be women representing all different places around the world. Places that I've been and seen and lived and where those places are very special to me. I am excited to show you them, I'm excited to paint them and let's see where this goes. I am a traveller. I am a nomad. I love living in different places and getting parts of those cultures to be a part of you too. I hope you enjoy this series. We're gonna start with Florence and then we'll be doing Capri um, and then we'll be going to other places around the world. So I, I wanna paint these women big, bright, bold, my usual style. I do not have big canvas. I've gone for plywood from my local hardware store, which is in a church. I've prepped it, I've sanded it. I've gessoed it. Sanded it, I've gessoed it. I've sanded it, I've gessoed it. Now it's ready to do the next stage. I'm gonna be putting a, what color is it? Burn umber. Sienna, one of them. I'm going to be putting a kind of wash on the background so that it gives my colour a bit more depth. Here, this is the kind of colour background that I'm going to do. Difference in the colour of that with that. This is on the plain white and then this is on the kind of yellowy Sienna burnt umber colour. We need to get some paint on that canvas. I mix together the yellow ochre and the burnt Sienna from my acrylics with some water and then once it's mixed nicely it's time to put that wash onto the board. I'm using a big wide flat brush to make sure I can get as much coverage on the board as possible, making sure to cover every single bit and watch out for those drips as well. I've got on my yellow ochre and burnt sienna wash so now we're gonna leave that to dry and then we can start painting the background. Now that it's dry, we've got all of the rest of our equipment to get going. So we've got our paints. I'm going to mix up some colours. Options for mixing palettes. A glass chopping board. The lid of a giant paint. Or the genius that is Stay Wet palette. These are my paints from yesterday. They're still wet because it has this sponge underneath, this special paper, and then you can just Put the lid on it overnight and keep your colours. I'm going to use the glass chopping board today. If you do get a glass chopping board, make sure you get one with no grooves in it. I really like how simple it is to clean afterwards. Now let's get some paint on. I don't have a studio so I am doing this in the house. So obviously you need to get some preparation up there on the wall and make sure that I don't make the whole house a painted studio so just taping up some uh, polythene onto the wall so then I can be free with my colours when I'm painting. I'm using a nice big flat brush again here to get all my different colours on using water and white to blend as well. So when that's done then that means that I can draw on my figure. The background still needs another coat, it's not finished, but I wanted to make sure that I had drawn on my figure so I knew where she was going to be in the painting and here I'm blocking in some of her hair colour as well before I start then doing another layer on the background. I want to finish the background now so then it's done because everything else is going to be on top of the woman so this way I can keep those nice big sweeping brush strokes, get that colour all blended before I paint on the woman. 
Now we've got all of the beautiful background colours, you can see they've all dried. I'm going to concentrate on the figure now. So this was my initial sketch. I've got an idea of what I want on the skin and on the back and the colouring of the hair and face, but I'm going to work it out more in the actual painting. But I've drawn on some more of the details onto the body and now I'm gonna start painting. I'm trying to push myself with this series by not deciding exactly what the whole thing's gonna look like and just doing an initial sketch, have an idea of the coloring and the patterns that I wanna put on, but not having a completely finished design before painting because I wanna experiment with the colors and with the brush strokes and creating new ways for me to create patterns. So, even though I've got some more of the drawing on, I have an idea of the colours I want to play with. It is going to be the idea of playing with the paint um, on the canvas, on the board, and then seeing where it goes from there. So it could go wrong, but that's okay, because you just paint over it again. The standout piece for me in Florence is Brunelleschi's dome. It's this huge dome on the Duomo in Florence and as soon as you come into Florence from the train station you can see it, uh, as soon as you drive in from the motorway you see it, you know that you're coming to Florence when you see the dome and it is a masterpiece. In this photo you can see the dome from Piazza di Michelangelo so you can see how big it is compared to the rest of the city. I am painting it from the viewpoint of the tower of Palazzo Vecchio. The facade of the Duomo is made up of white, green and red marble so I wanted to give a little nod to that in my patterning that I put onto this piece here. Filling in the first layer of the hair colour now, she is also going to have a terracotta top head just like all the rooftops in Florence and then I'll be putting in layers with a little bit more detail so that it has a really bold bright hair. This writing on the shoulder is written from a piece that's on the floor in Florence so you'll see here I took a photo with my feet. It's engraved on the floor near the church of Santa Maria Novella, which is near the train station. And this meant a lot to me. As you can see, the translation is, every step I have taken in my life has led me here now. And that was really important to me at the time. Before I moved to Florence, I felt like I was losing a bit of my energy for life and my enthusiasm, which you know I've got bucket loads of. And so this, seeing this in Florence when I was living there meant so much to me. I'm painting in here the puzzle ring, which you can see on the right. And it's a ring that falls apart when it's not worn all together and the rings aren't in a certain pattern. So there's only one way to put it back together again. I got this ring in Florence. The symbol of Florence is a giglio or a fleur de lis and so this is the emblem of the city of Florence. So this is a really important imagery. This is on the Christmas lights in Florence and so I wanted this as the symbol on the back. Finished! Time to see the final thing! Da -da -da. And you know what has been over me the whole time while I've been painting? Yeah, the Duomo. much for watching I hope you loved this piece on Florence let me know if it reminds you of Florence or if there's somewhere that makes you feel that much about a place as I do with Florence I'd love to know what you think of the painting too any questions below as well I'd love to hear your comments don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell below <laughs> see you for the next creative adventure <laughs>